Hey, welcome to the process. My name is Dr. John Bush. ADP versus end of the season PPR points by positions. We start the tight ends. Part one, uh, needless to say, you're late to the party. If this is the first video, go back and start uh, way back in the beginning of these lessons here. Looking for clues, patterns, expectations, understanding uncertainty, all aspects of a good fantasy football draft here. Uh, most of your colleagues uh, in your leagues will are asleep at the wheel. This is an opportunity for you to get ahead of the, the game here a little bit. So let's continue with uh, my data from 2015 to 2023 last year. And I take each uh, draft round ADPs, uh, split it into sixes. So I cut each draft round into half. And what we see in each box is the average uh, end of the season PPR. So we have an idea of what was said through ADP before and what was reality after the season. And then I've got the nine-year total here in this column, average of total PPR. So uh, you can see what's happening here. Uh, last year, uh, some people were drafting Kelsey. He got some points, but, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty costly to get him, but that's kind of what you did in the ATP, ADP sector here. Uh, 7 through 12, uh, 2021, we had, I think that might have been Kelsey as well, and so forth. So what I've done is broken the sixth and... Uh, colorized the boxes in the top 30% over nine years and the bottom 30% uh, is in red and clear or no color is in the mid 40%. So you can think of uh, extreme winners and losers here by the color here uh, and get a feel for what's going on. Clearly, this idea of elite tight ends going early is supported over the ninth year. Looks like after ADP 30 here, it gets a little lean. I mean, you can almost set some tiers, like uh, the top 30 ADP is the elite tight ends are going there, and then this second tier from 31 to 54 is kind of that second tier of tight ends. And then it gets really uh, about the same. There are highs and lows here. And my takeaway is if this is where you're taking your first tight end, uh, I'm not sure you shouldn't wait to way late at this point. It's, it's the barbell concept that you're doing early or you're doing late here. I can understand that, but I do note the mid-tier here, the second tier is right in here to before the 54th ADP, so that is some consideration. But really, these numbers, if you look at the average here, it's about, what, 180? It's a little, maybe 20, 30 points over the season. I mean, per week, we're not talking a lot. And if you're good at streaming, the barbell still may be the way to go to draft late. If you look at uh, failures, we start seeing at 55 to 60, we had four yearly failures here. Had a couple of failures, but we had some failures 79 to 84, three failures, 73, 78, three failures. So in this block in here, you start to get some serious fail, uh, failing 
as far as your draft versus what you're actually getting here. Uh, there are a few examples of some goodness, but it's pretty rare to think that you're going to come up with a super elite tight end this late. It's just not happening. At best, you're getting an average in the mid-40 percentile. Uh, or, unfortunately, there's some landmines here, some of these failures. Whereas up in here in the elite status, you're mainly getting uh, elite success here. You know, one failure way back in the day and a couple of averages. So really, and one might argue these could be considered failure uh, uh, this early in the draft. But a lot more success than failures in here. You start getting a mixed bag in this second tier, a little bit skewed to the success. And then after that point, you're just hoping to get a mid tight end type here waiting that late. You uh, probably won't get a superior tight end at that point. I use box and whiskers to look at the distribution of the populations here, see if anything's going on. Last year, the population was uh, definitely uh, skewed. We had kind of a high skew a little bit, whereas the preceding three years was low. So that meant that uh, uh, we were getting a lot more goodness than usual. And what that's saying is, look at, look at this. It's one, two, three, four, five. What it's saying is, we were getting a lot more success a little later last year. I wouldn't count on that if you look historically, but there's been some years where that has happened. So it's not out of the question that you could grab you one of these, but there are some uncertainties about what you're grabbing at that point. Nothing else is really standing out to me uh, here. If we look at the uh, tight end years versus average by draft sector. If you look in again, just graphing the actual data here, here's the data, and then graphing it, looking at trends. It's a slow trend down here. Let's see what was last year green. So last year, little dip and then kind of recover and then a, a dip again. So kind of like hit your leap, dropped, kind of came back a little bit. But uh, it's a gradual drop, but it's nothing here I don't think is really telling us a lot that I think just the visualization of this data will, will tell you here. Uh, kind of contracting the rounds here. Again, uh, Round one, it's been uh, two times super successful. Round two, you're getting pretty good success, a couple of eh, rounds three and four. So it looks like, I mean, if you look at this, it's almost round one is tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four, round six. And then good luck trying to pick one. Uh, the reason I don't like waiting till after the you know fifth, six rounds is sometimes you can pick about the same guy up later. So that's why I think the barbell, I mean, you can wait to the fourth here. So my overall would be if you don't want the top one, I wouldn't wait later than fourth to collect one here. So if you think about our other, uh, ADP versus end of the season EOS. We see a WRRB, and then I could see a tight end round three. Uh, maybe come back with uh, a WR at that point. Could be you, you're going to grab your QB right in about rounds five and six. You know, just kind of getting a, an average game plan doesn't mean that's what we follow. It's just kind of, here's a template. If the draft gets wonky, then you can adjust uh, to what's going on. 
If you look at it again, nothing really standing out in the population distribution here. It was a little bit spread last year, and we, t we talked about that. And uh, if you kind of uh, look at the draft round versus the uh, PPR versus the ADP, the draft rounds are here, and the X here. Pretty, pretty light, linear distribution here. Nothing really dramatic. But like I said, I like to look in this case at the data and again last year we really had an exception to the rule people were finding fairly good guys to the seventh round that's an exception and that's uh there's been a lot of failures in the sixth seventh eighth round so that's why and even in the fifth round it's getting tricky so to me just playing safe i'm grabbing in the top four or i'm grabbing maybe even later still in streaming at this point. Uh, so what I've done previously is divided into uh, counts, uh, number of uh, situations that were in the top, the mid, and the bottom, and just gave counts and looked by year in the first 14 rounds and converted that counts to percentage. And uh, if you look overall, let's just look at percentage here. Uh, you can see that last year was an exception. Look at that. 46% of uh, were in the top here, 46%. It's very unusual to have that many uh, tight ends in the top groups here. Uh, that's just rare. We haven't ever seen that. Uh, most of the story is most of the tight ends are in the mid, right? That's But last year that wasn't the case. Had a little bit higher failure rate. So the concern I have going into 2024 is this pattern that happened last year. You could get tricked by 2023 if you just use that as a standalone uh, data, data set to predict. I would rather go back and look overall. And it's a new, last year I think was unusual with having so many in the top uh, top group here. So I would not count on that is what I guess I would, would take home at that point. I graphed the goodness here in green. I did the bar graph of those numbers. And then the trend. And then here's the, the mid here drops and then comes back late. So see, it's... Even the mid is telling you the bar bell may work. Uh, you you know you're tending to to get a lot more mid these days. But last year was a sad kind of look at the skew. We've never seen a year like 2023 at all. Uh, the last four years, the uh, low group has been lowest if you look at 19, 18, 17. Uh, we had a lot of failures here. That was not a great year for tight end those three years. So, uh, uh, like I said, these were uh, having great tight ends in 2023 was really an exception here to that. Uh, I just, another way to look at it was looking down the year. I like to look horizontal as well. Uh, probably shouldn't do the, the, the format. I don't know if I can change that, but the, maybe I can make that smaller here. Hey. 
yeah, maybe that helps. Uh, just looking 2015, and then you can see 2023 was an exception. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five. And we haven't had a, a, a five year in under 84 in a while. We had a four, we've had a four, a two, a three, a two. We've had a five and 17, had a four, had a two. So last year was an, uh, kind of an outlier. Just be aware. And we were able to pick one up way late uh, as you're tied in. So that's, that's an exception. If you look overall, you can look at the horizontal. And from 15 to 23, last year wasn't too bad, but uh, did have a failure right here. I, I, like I said, one could argue that just average is a failure as well. But for the most part, if you're in this, hey, what are you barking at? Settle down. My dog's crazy here. Uh, the first three rounds, most you were seeing was XX. The next, what, three rounds? Still pretty good, but... Uh, there are some failures here. So if you balance the top and the bottom, the distribution is what well, we got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven failures, and we had really one failure. So it, it starts getting highly uncertain here. Next group down, even more failures relative to the tops here. And that course continues here it's it's rare to get that you can divide it the seventh round versus you know the, the first seven the next seven and we see a lot of failures but even after round five it's it worries me uh especially in tight end premiums again so the idea of you need to have your tight end kind of an early tight end or wait and hope that you stream one seems a viable pattern here. And if you look uh, at the percentages here uh, of, of the best. So what I did here, I took the actual numbers and then I converted each number to the best that's ever been. And we could see... Uh, you can you can grab in the 70s, but it can, especially after the uh, fourth round, it, you, you start getting really some sadness here. I know last year. So if you use last year thinking, oh, man, I can wait till the seventh round. Well, imagine you get these kind of years. So that's the whole point of looking backward is to have a broad perspective of the data and the idea you're going to wait to round 14 to grab somebody it's just not realistic so this should temper your expectations here another way to look is who was the top in each round uh over all the nine years and you can see uh you know where the the bottoms come up and like i said look look at round five four versus four three two two three so it gets to me i'm more worried about the failure than the the successes and so looks to me like you know if you stay in the top four you've got a pretty good chance of getting a, a good one here and if you look make that percentile it's pretty clear that's the case here and if you look uh 15 to 23, and you look at the tops, and you can look that uh, overall, as you go down the draft here, so this is round one, this is round 14, I just didn't label it, but you're, you're de having a decay curve here, and like I said, here's rounds one, two, three, four, notice, bam. And notice here, rounds five, 
The bottom and the top are the same. Close. Bottom's actually uh, higher than the top. So you've lost your tops and you've got a lot more bottom plays here, rounds five, six, seven. And then it gets real lean to pick a hero tight end this late. Most likely you're getting a mid. Okay, and even that starts playing out. You get a lot of bottoms at that point. So this this graph may actually, in a nutshell, describe what we're we're trying to to see here overall. So I think I'll stop here, and uh, I think I'll I have part two, kind of just breezing through the tight end. Shouldn't take us too long to finish. Okay, this is Dr. Bush for the process. Come back for part two of the tight ends data here. Okay.